When we started this garden, this fountain was actually supposed to be a centerpiece. It started over here in the center of this square. The sound of the water was really important to us and that was where it stood for the first couple of years. What happened, however, was that we realized that this spot got 10 plus hours of sun every day and it was too much sun for a fountain of that type. We spent a ridiculous amount of time looking at fountains, listening to fountains, because the sound was what was most important to us in addition to the style. And this was the one we settled on. What I didn't realize was that the reservoir wasn't very deep compared to where the pump goes. This style of fountain generally splatters and you get a lot of water around the base of the fountain. And so you lose water quickly from that in addition to evaporation. Long story short, the fountain was full of algae and always running out of water. So we never really got to enjoy it except for in the spring. So we got the bright idea that we would remove the fountain from this area. We pulled out the concrete and had it transferred to this side of the yard where we thought it would get more shade and if it splattered, it wouldn't be a big deal, but it still gets algae. And no matter how hard we try, it still runs out of water way too fast. So you can see this fountain has quite a bit of algae in it. If I scratch the bottom, <laughs> but you can kind of see the line it creates if I scratch the bottom. So in order to keep that in check, you have to clean the fountain out and use algicides to keep the fountain clear. And the way I clean out the fountain is you have to empty it. And because I don't have a drain hole, I have to do things like this. So having a drain hole or a pump is your best bet. One of the other things I have is this cheap little fish tank skimmer that I use to get the little debris that falls into the fountain. It's so easy just to skim it around the top and you can lift it out. So this is what I've learned since getting a fountain that I wish I knew before buying one. In addition to the look and sound of the fountain, you need to make sure you know the depth of the water reservoir. Remember, a pump needs to stay fully submerged at all times. So if you have a shallow reservoir, it's easy to run out of water and for the pump to get too stressed, try and just pull in air. Next is algae. Algae is really hard to keep up with if you don't have a deep reservoir because the water gets warm really quickly and you're gonna have to add algicide. According to the people we bought the pen, the fountain from, you need to add algicide every time you add water. And when we're running it in the peak of the summer or in early to late spring when it's getting warm, we're adding five to 10 gallons of water each time, which means you need to add algicide every day. Honestly, you can do that, but we don't keep up on it. Lastly, your fountain should have a drain plug. My fountain doesn't have a drain, and so I have to bail or pump the water out when I want to clean it. When you're cleaning it, you've got to pump it, clean it, pump it, clean it, pump it, clean it, so that you can put fresh water in it in the end. I hope this all helps you choose your fountain in the future. We also have a small fountain in the circle garden. We call it the bird fountain. It has a super deep reservoir, about 12 inches. So we never worry about it running out of water and the water does stay cooler longer, but it still builds up algae every year and we have to add algicide regularly. I hope this helped you in choosing your fountain and thank you for joining me for my garden journey.